Hi everybody, Ko here with another guide. Uh, this will hopefully be pretty quick. This time on shipbuilding. Uh, this is my ship that we have built here. And I'll kind of show you the process on how to get your own ship going, what you need, what to look for, that kind of thing. Uh, there are two things to go over before we start building ships. The first one is the perks you're gonna need. The perks are available in the tech tree. The first one is going to be to actually use the ships and that is your piloting. Go. You want to get this at least rank four. The damn fish. Thank you so much, uh, Sam Co. I appreciate that. I will. The first one is pirate uh, piloting. Pirating is a different thing. Piloting up to rank four will let you use C ships. There are A, B, and C class items. We'll talk about that more when we get into the builder. But this right here will let you actually fly those ships. So to fly a rank C ship, you need to have a rank four in the piloting perk. Applause, On that please. note, why thank you so much. Lindsay from Pathfinder. On that note, we also have the Starship Design perk. This guy here is gonna let you actually build those components. Uh, as many of the components to be used in the custom build crafter or to add on to your existing ship, you actually need this perk ranked up to do that. And I'll show you where those are when we get into it in a second here. So that being said, there is one other thing that I wanted to make sure gets mentioned in this video. And that is not all ship builders are created equal. In fact, you can only get some certain parts for your ship in certain places. So a great example of this, for instance, is the cockpit that you see on this right here is called a Demos S, uh, DS 440.2 Ares Bridge. You can't build this here. So this being my outpost that I've built a shipbuilding platform on. So if you want to get some components, you have to fly to certain places to get them. Now, if you look in the uh, info section of this YouTube video, you will see a link to a Reddit thread, and that will tell you the different places you can go to get specific parts. Mostly they revolve around like specific manufacturers. So Stroud Eklund has one, uh, Nova has one, um, there's one for Demos and the Demos shipyard. So all you have to do is fly out to those locations and then talk to the people there to get those specific manufacturer parts. Now, also pretty cool to mention, um, although each shipyard has a restricted number of parts, if you want to get pretty much the most parts in one place, then what you want to do is you want to build a pad at one of your outposts. So funny enough, to get the most options in one builder, um, build a pad, park your ship like this on it, then go to this little panel right here, open it up, view and modify, and then here you go, here you are. So anyway, this is my ship here. It is a very slow, very cargo heavy, always encumbered, just like me, um, beefy powerhouse. It's got a big shield. It doesn't have a lot of maneuverability. And as you can see, it is flush with all sorts of weaponry. Uh, I am still feeling out like the best weapons I like to use and things of that nature. But what we'll go over in this video is kind of how to do all this so you know how to do it yourself. So on that note, <clears throat> double click to select everything if you ever want to, and then you can hit the delete key and take it out. So what is a ship in Starfield. A ship composes of a bunch of key components that are put together in the right order to get you all the, the necessary components for your ship to fly. If at any point you want to know what your ship is missing, you hit the C key. This is called the flight check. This is a, we'll call it a mini quest to show you what you need on your ship until it flies away. So in this case, we can just go right from the top. You're missing a cockpit. All right, well, if we hit the G key to bring up our list, we can use this top T and Q to scroll to what we need here. Picking a cockpit, of course, is not only an aesthetic decision, but also cockpits have different mounting points. And what I'm about to say applies to all parts. So I'm not gonna say this for every part, but here we go. Parts have different mounting points. They have different sizes of themselves. You can think of this game is kind of, or the, the ship building this game is modular. So a, a one, one, one is kind of like one slot over, one slot up, and uh, one slot thick. So for instance, a good example of what kind of like one, a one, one, one would be is if you go to the structure, you can get these kind of normal, I think they call them, um, let me see here. You can scroll down to, see when you have your own port, there's so many different ones. So you have to actually get to the one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. There's braking engines. These are now, by the way, here we go. So this, this is like a nice kind of one, 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 one. So this size here is the 
a kind of standard unit that your ship will be. Now, not all pieces are this size, but they all kind of follow this. So if you ever see like a, um, especially halves, for instance, if it says like a one by two or a one by three, then it's generally talking like that would be a one by two. That would be a one by three. If you ever see a three by three, which does exist, you know, it would be, you know, like a nice little block of these. And yes, there are three by three halves you can get for your ship if you want them, uh, which are actually gigantic freaking halves that you can then walk around in inside your ship. So yeah, that would be a three by three um, and all that kind of thing. So anyway, going back to what we were talking about, uh, when you pick your pieces, these little circles indicate where they can connect to other pieces. Now, this can be very important for things like halves because halves will, uh, in some cases you have to have like movable area between components. So you wanna make sure that those spots line up. And also, of course, um, for instance, your cockpit will only have a connection for a half on the back, things like that. You just wanna be mindful of those when you're selecting them. Selecting them. So if we go back to the cockpit, we'll just uh, pick a regular cockpit now. Now, all the stats for the items are gonna appear over here. And these vary per manufacturer and component. So the first one you're gonna look at is cargo. Um, that's how much that piece can hold. Obviously not all pieces have cargo holds, um, but cockpits and cargo containers do. Uh, the next thing you're gonna see is hull, which adds to kind of like the girth of your ship. And then crew stations is something else as well. Um, the whole how many crew you can have on your ship thing is not super clear. I, or I should, excuse me, I should say it's super obvious. It's a lot of different factors that add up to how many crew they can put on your ship. Crew is important because crew, de, de, what type of crew and their abilities dictate what kind of bonuses you get on your ship. Um, but we're not gonna go over, to, over too much of the crew stuff in this video. We're just gonna go over the kind of construction part, but something to keep in mind um, is to look into that if you wanna have a bustling crew on your ship to see the best way to kind of get what you need with those stats. Anyway, finally at the bottom, you have value and then you have mass uh, as well, which are, you know, also very important. So we're just gonna pick a starting one here. We'll put down this. So if you notice when we put this down, we no longer have the, you're missing a cockpit thing. So again, using the C, you can kind of work through the list of what you need to go down. So the next thing we need is a, uh, let's see. We need a docker. So we'll go over here. Um, now, what's kind of cool is if you notice right now, this cockpit is kind of right on the ground, which obviously doesn't make sense. Um, but the second you put your docker on, uh, excuse me, not your docker, the second you put the lander on, you will notice that it will um, kind of level out. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So we'll put the docker on there. Uh, next thing we need is we need a let me see the exact name they use, a bay. Now the bay is how you're going to get into and off of this ship. So I prefer, for instance, my bay to be in the front of the ship because I'm usually encumbered, which means I have to run to the door. So if I put my bay on the back of the ship, since ships normally land facing whatever objective you're gonna be doing, if you put the bay on the back of the ship, that means you have to run your ass all the way to the back when you're encumbered because you can't fast travel to your ship. So, you know, that's a consideration, uh, something to think about. So anyway, now that we have our bay here, we can put that on the ship. Now, if you've noticed, the second I put that on, our whole ship raised off the ground, and now we have this nice little green area. That is the ground, and we're gonna have to base the rest of what we put on the ship around that to make sure that that little staircase is perfectly where it needs to be. So for instance, you can't like, you know, take a bunch of things and now, and then build them up down here because then this would be off the ground and that would not work. So once you put this piece on, that is gonna be kind of like the base layer of your ship moving forward. So pretty cool stuff. All right, moving on. The ship has too few engines, okay? Uh, first of all, this looks like garbage um, the way that it is now. So one of the things we'll wanna do is let's actually make it so this ship has some space. Uh, the, the module I'm gonna show you now is called a HAB, and these are basically where you would physically walk in the ship. So HABs not only come from different companies, but using your arrow keys, you can scroll through different types to offer different interiors. So a workshop, for instance, has um, crafting things in it. Uh, a science lab has a research thing in it. 
Um, there's ones that add passenger slots. So if you're wanting to do passenger missions and ferry people around the universe, you will need that. Some add cruise slots. Again, you'll need to look into exactly how that works. Um, it's not always a one-to-one, -one, but yeah, this kind of stuff will, um, this is actually the interior of your ship. So when you move into your ship physically, you will be walking through these halves, which is kind of fun. So if you notice here also, when we look at this, see how that uh, looks a little bit different, that airlock? Those are what you want to sync up for your character to be able to physically move through. So in this case, we'll just drag these pieces off. We'll connect that hab module to our cockpit. We'll put the lander back there. And then this here is our docker, which does need to have access to our cockpit. There needs to be a physical path between the, the, the docker and the, co the cockpit. Whenever you dock with another ship or a station, this is where it's going to happen. Little side note, by the way, the docker also needs to be on the topmost part of your ship. So if you try to build your ship up and around it, you will get an error saying that the docker has to be on the very top. So just keep in mind, you will need a, a physical path from wherever your docking module is to the front of your ship. If we were to put, for instance, like a reactor and a grav drive here, and then the docker, it would tell us that we don't have a path there. So uh, it can also be on the, basically, it doesn't have to be on the top. It needs to be on an outer edge. So I personally use top dockers, but as long as your docker is on an out an outermost edge, it can even be the bottom, as chat's saying, um, then you're good to go. So just keep that in mind whenever you're, you're placing your docker. So moving on, um, other things that the ship absolutely requires are a reactor and reactors have a few extra stats that come into play. Um, so not only is your reactor going to have a class associated with it, where again, not only does the ship building come in, but that's also where your piloting license comes in. You see down here, you have requirements for these. Um, but reactors are also going to do things like alter your repair rate. Uh, and most importantly, they're going to dictate your power generated. So if you look at the very top left, we don't have anything yet, but you're soon going to see that start populating with different requirements. Those, the power generated are pips, which are the little, the little lines that get filled in as you add to the power requirements of your ship. So the short of it is the more you're going to have on your ship, the more power you're going to want to have coursing through it so you have more to delegate into your ship as, as needed. So, um, now as you see, if we go here, um, let's see, does it act, it doesn't actually have it quite yet. I think we need to do a little bit more, but soon it will give us an error saying that this docker is not at the top. But let's keep going for now. So the next thing we need on this obviously is engines. So if we go over to our engine, which is right here, Engines provide all sorts of different stats as well. You've got maneuvering thrust, which is moving around. You've got your just straight up engine thrust moving forward. Again, like other systems, uh, these are classed. Keep in mind, the class of your engine is going to be restricted by the class of your reactor. So you cannot put, for instance, a class C engine, like this big massive thing, on a ship with a B class reactor you will get the mod, uh, the the error ship contains modules that exceed reactor class. So again, leveling up that that star feel or the leveling up the uh, ship building skill is pretty paramount um, if you are wanting to to get everything going because you need to have a C class reactor to use all the best parts. So, and yes, for the record, uh, to answer this in chat, C is top tier. A is first, B is second, and C is top tier. Um, so you have to put that in too. This guy also requires starship design rank one. Um, oh, oh, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The class system is more attached to the piloting skill, not the uh, starship design skill. Um, so that's that's the one you're gonna wanna make sure for that one as well. This also applies to captured ships, I believe. If we, we actually got a ship during the course of our main story that was class C and we couldn't pilot it because we didn't have enough skill. So uh, moving on, a couple quick notes, by the way, that I, I wanna throw in here to make sure people know. Um, the R and F keys are super, super, super easy to help things connect. So if you hold mouse and, and click on something and you ever find where it's like, I'm moving over the ship and nothing's happening. Why isn't it connecting? This is so weird. This system sucks, which is exactly what I thought for a while. It's probably because your held down component is not on the right plane for the connectors. If you hit F, if you notice still nothing, still nothing, still nothing. But then as we get close to the ship, now it's really easily connecting to the top. 
If I wanted it to connect to the sides, I could go down even more. Now it's super easily connecting to the sides. If I want it on the bottom, we can go down a little bit. Now it's easily connecting on the bottom. So using the R and F keys uh, kind of goes up and down to get all that stuff easily connected. On that note also, if you ever want to quickly uh, copy and paste things, if you single click to get that red outline, you can hold down control. Uh, this allows for an undo redo, but most importantly, it allows you to copy and paste when you need to down the road as well. So if you make like a side of your ship and you, or, or, you, or if you make a part of your ship that you wanna kind of move to the other side, you can literally just hold down control and click on a bunch of things. And then you can hit, hold down, uh, hold down control and then hit G. Sometimes it doesn't do it. Um, to copy them and then you can just move that right over. So with the, in this engine's case, for instance, where it is working, you click on the engine, it gets the red border, you hold down control, you hit G to duplicate and just pop it on the other side. And that way you don't have to go through and, you know, find everything over again and go from there. So now that we have some engines, we've got a reactor on there. Uh, the Now see, I put this under the lander. So it's now yelling at me that this isn't gonna work. So we need to put that on top. There we go. The green's looking good. Now this ship, if it were to land, would just flop onto the ground and it would be terrible. So what we need now is we need to go over to our landing gear. I think it's just called gear. We need to put some gear on this, some landing gear. So what we'll do is we'll get some, uh, some Accu landers. Now, the interesting thing about landers is that you need to have a certain amount based on the weight of your ship. And for that to properly work, you need to make sure that the combined landing thrust is enough for the mass of your ship. So in this case, oh, hold on, we're gonna hit Z again. And for the record, what I just did there is if you noticed, if we copy this component, it copies on the left side variant. If we then hit Z once, it's center variant. If we hit Z again to flip it, it's now right variant. So now we have this nice little kind of consistent boom, boom theme on each side there. So the landing thrust of your combined landing thrust value has to basically be enough to support the mass of your ship. Uh, as your ship gets bigger, you will require more landing thrust. Not all gear is created equal. Uh, in fact, if you look at some of the Hope gear, uh, I don't know if we have any here. Yeah, the Hope landing gear um, has two thrust, where if you were to put this big beefy ass engine on, this only has one thrust. So kind of funny there. Um, also, if you notice, by the way, not only is not all landing gear created equal, but they also uh, are used in different points. So like if we were to put this one here, you can see the green lines up perfectly. If we were to put this other style here though, then unfortunately, because it is so much larger, um, it does not, hold on, let me pop that back up. Uh, it does not line up with the ground. And that means that it's not actually gonna be usable there. You can see how it turns red there because it's too big. So to use this, for instance, we would need to um, put another module of some kind on the top and then attach it to that. Not that we can use two of these, but if you see now, when we move this up, it turns green. So if you're ever having any weird situations where you're seeing like green and red stuff on the ground, it basically just means you need to balance stuff out. So, and go from there. So um, other quick tips as we continue to build the ship. And I know I'm just kind of sprinkling tips in here. So I'm hoping that as people watch the whole video, they'll eventually get the whole picture. Um, if you ever open up your, your build window with G and your mouse is just out over here, you will see every part you can build to every part of your ship. But sometimes you might notice that when you open up your build thing, it's like this restricted amount. Like, see, like, why do I only have this? Where are my weapons? Where are my landing gear? Things like that. That's because if you ever mouse over a component, when you open G while you're moused over a component, it will only show you the things that can attach to that piece. So if I mouse over this cockpit and I hit G, these are only things that will be able to snap on to that piece. Nothing in the list now will not work in some way with the piece that I've moused open or moused over. So that can be super convenient. Um, if you put down, for instance, like a, if you mouse over uh, like a, a weapon mount and just hit that, then it just goes only to the weapons that can be put on that, that kind of thing. So that one's, that one's a pretty cool little tip. 
Anyway, going back, we're missing a grav drive. Now, every ship needs a grav drive. Grav drives are going to basically dictate, first of all, how much of the ship can be moved by the drive. So you need to have more grav jump thrust. You'll see right there, the larger your ship is. And um, then the power as well is, uh, is a factor that you'll want to consider too, as the power, now that we start putting these in, um, directly equates to the pips at the top, you can see there. So more power to a grav drive means that it can spin up faster. So if you want to use a grav drive to escape sticky situations, then you want to make sure that your grav drive has a lot of power. But the big thing you're probably going to be looking for is balancing the thrust with the weight of your ship to get your jump range pretty much as, as far as you can. There are some missions and some galaxies that require a minimum jump range. So it may get to a point where you need to bring into your ship and kind of strip down parts to get the mass lower or upgrade your jump drive, um, your grav drive to get to those further locations. Can you put multiple reactors on your ship? No, in fact, most components that are core, you can only have one of. You can only have one landing, you can only have one grav drive, you can only have one reactor. Um, anytime you try to add more, it will just give you an error. So moving on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch out these engines because they are frankly too big for what we're doing. Do, 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 do. We're going to grab some Eamon engines, pop that on the back. Boom. Done. Okay, great. So we're kind of working through these errors. If you remember, we had eight at the beginning. Now we have four. We don't have any fuel tanks. Uh, fuel again dictates how much you can jump around. Um, you don't need a huge amount of fuel. This is almost as long as you have fuel tanks, you're good to go. Uh, I have not seen, look at my balls. I have not had too much issue with fuel tanks, but you can, um, you know, really just kind of put a few on. I, I believe it allows you to like more consistent and easy, easy jumping stuff. But again, fuel, fuel, just make sure your ship has fuel tanks and you're pretty much good to go. Docker module needs to be on the outside edge of the ship. This is what I was talking about earlier. So what we'll do here is we'll move this stuff up. We'll see if we can pop you in a better location. We see that it goes there, that's fine. We'll move this stuff up. See here, if I move this over, it only attaches to this top part, which I don't really like. Um, so that's that's where we wanna use the F key to get lower down. Kind of line it up with that, there we go. See, now we can just like super easily put that in. So if things don't seem to be lining up right, nine times out of 10, it's because you're not on the, the right uh, like Z value and just use R and F to go up and down. There we go. One error left, landing bay needs to be connected to the cockpit. So in this situation, what we have to do is make sure that the landing bay has a direct path to the cockpit. Now, if I look at my landing bay, what I see is that even though there is a circular connector on all these sides, the only connector that goes forward is on the side. The only connection that a person can go through is this way. So if I put it here on my ship, obviously that does not connect into the hab that then goes into the cockpit. Now you can try to flip these things, but unfortunately they don't always flip the way that you need to, as you can see in this case. So in some cases it may be easier to actually find like a, a one that more fits what you're trying to do. So in our case here, what we'll do is go to Docker or not Dockers. Uh, we'll go over to, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. There we go, bays. Uh, we'll find a bay that kind of fits what we want to do here more. We'll just take this landing bay, for instance. Can we switch this one around? We can't switch this one around. Um, let's see, let's go back. Let's see. Oh, four landing bay looks kind of nice. Here we go. We'll take this guy. See, it's not connecting properly because it's too high. So we're gonna go down, down. Uh, we'll see if we can connect this. Just like that, boom. So see, again, it was just a situation that we weren't in the right place. So now all the green is on, which means everything is lined up properly. We can take this and just put it somewhere else. In fact, I'm like, you know what? That looks pretty good there. Let me pop one over here. So I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna hold down control. I'm gonna hit G, pop one over there. Easy peasy. Now we're gonna get an error that this guy's not connected. So we'll need to pull that over there, pop that on. And boom, we built a ship. That's it. So it's, you adjust, with, using what we just did, you have just seen a basic ship get built. Now, this is where it gets fun. Um, 
the next step is obviously to put on the, the flavor, the stuff that's really gonna add to your ship. So the first thing that you always need is shields. Uh, shields, of course, have classes as well. It's going to increase or decrease based on, on um, how much they cost, what the classes of them, that kind of thing. The big thing you're looking for for shields are the max health and the regen rate. Find something that kind of suits your fancy. When you do, you can just pop it on and boom, you're shielded. When you see that on, you will also see that the, the powers will start filling at the top. Same for weaponry. So weaponry is a little bit more interesting because it doesn't necessarily always connect easily to your ship. Now, in this case, we have two little things down here, but sometimes you're gonna need a lot more. Now, that's where structural stuff comes into play. Um, structural stuff is kind of, it does add a little bit of mass, but this is where your ship really gets its flavor. Uh, by the way, if you are ever bringing up a part, another little tip, if you're ever bringing up your uh, any part and you wanna see it, see how right now we can't see anything because it's in the middle of the ship? Just make sure your camera is off of your ship. It always, whatever you bring up always goes to the center of your screen. So this way you can like easily see whatever you're trying to connect. Always keep in mind as well that whenever you see these little things down here, that means you can scroll through different variants, which can be really helpful. So the thing about structural stuff is that it frequently will have more mount points for weapons. So in this case, we can go to like, um, let's see, this guy right here. I see how that guy has those that little bump on the top. So we can take this cowling, we can go up, put one there, we'll copy that over, put one there. And now if we mouse over this and we hit G, weapons and now we can start putting weapons on our ship so what's kind of cool about this uh and and we'll just really briefly touch on weaponry is this will not only easily let you pick things but you can very easily kind of decide what you want for your ship in terms of do you want you know something that can strip shields quickly and then go after the hull with missiles do you want to use beam weapons do you want to use auto turrets like there's lots and lots of different options but all of these have all their stats on this side. You're pretty much looking at the entire top for the important stuff. Um, these are the details are gonna tell you how much shield damage you're gonna do, hull damage you're gonna do, the fire rate, you have to factor that in as well. Make sure to look at the range because the, the range is going to dramatically decide your engagement range. Um, a lot of times if you have super long range weapons, which I really prefer myself, like particle cannons, a 3300 range is gonna outrange most enemy weapons. So one of the things I like to do, for instance, is load up my ship with like 3,300 range beam weapons. And then the second I see a ship come into range, I'm just pelting that guy before he's even near me with high damage uh, high damage beams that can that can be pretty awesome. So it's my stealth archer ship, that's right. Um, are you saying weaponry with a, with a D and an R? Yes, um, which is the incorrect way to do it. But at this point, I just do it to trigger some people in my chat. So when you pick the weaponry that you want for your ship, just keep in mind that all of this stuff functions differently. Uh, anytime you see auto turret, uh, let me see if I can find one here. This, here we go, auto alpha turret. You will not be able to aim these. They will engage at your current target. So just keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is that whenever you establish stuff here, so we'll put one there, we'll put one there. If you look up here, there's no power yet. That's because you have to hit C, go to weapons, and assign those to an area. So if you see right here, the second we assign that, we start seeing the stuff up here. You only have three banks of weapons and you are limited on the weaponry of your ship based on the power available to those three spots. So the obvious thing that people do is beams or shield, hull, and then like missiles. And then you can use your power to bounce between them. Uh, I like to, however, just have like a couple that are all beams, so it's really easy, and you can kind of like, you know, keep everything under the same umbrella. But when you put these in, when you look at the weapon, you can see there, the max power is three. We go over here, the max power is three. If you look at the top there, uh, it's half full. If we then put two more, that is now filled up to 12 pips, which is the maximum. If I try to put one more weapon on, Oh wait, we'll put it, can we put it under the ship maybe? That is when you get your error. Ship is using too much power for weapons, reduce weapon count. So when it says that, it usually just means in one thing. So at, at that point, 
the power for one weapon type cannot exceed 12, essentially. Now, what you can do, though, is that's just the beam weapons. So you could, for instance, get another weapon. Let's see, in this case, we'll go back to weapons. We'll pick, um, let's see. Pick this guy here. This guy's a max power of four. So we could take this missile launcher. We could put two of them under our front there. Then when we go to assign that, you can see since these are both four power, watch this right here. We'll assign that to two. And now we have eight power available in our second weapon slot there. And then you can have a third one as well to then balance that. Now, of course, there's a whole lot of red here, <laughs> which means that our reactor is probably not gonna be able to keep up with that. There are, uh, there are, I think, what, 34 different pips that want to be filled, but our reactor is only gonna fill 16 of them. So that's one of the reasons, for instance, that reactors are so important as you start leveling up your ship. Um, and as you start adding more and more stuff to it. So right now, I think at level 43, the max reactor we can get, I wanna say is 34. Yep, we can make a 34 reactor. You can see that's a, a two by one by, or what is that? That's a two by one by one, um, which is a lot beefier than this guy. And um, that is gonna provide, what? Twice the power, uh, over twice the power. Yeah, than, than the other one. So. Keep in mind, leveling up that piloting skill and uh, also starship design so you can build this stuff is actually really, really important. So, yeah, two by two by one. Yeah. So anyway, that is the basics of shipbuilding. So on that note, um, once you have all this stuff down, it's pretty easy to build something like this. The only extra, big extra stuff you see on a ship like that is basically a lot of the structural things. So like the wings on my ship are all structural, the uh, which then add mount points. Uh, I also use like different types of interior stuff to kind of flesh it out. You know, these wings are structural, this guy's structural. All the engines are put on different mount points then connect up. You can see, like I was saying earlier, I'm a big fan of beam weaponry. So I just am bristling with beam weapons on this thing. You also want to make sure to add cargo bays as cargo bays will decide how much your shield or how much your ship can carry. Um, cargo bays, by the way, are a great way early game to just be chungusing more stuff around with you as you explore the universe, even before you have outposts. So you can just, with, with your very first frontier ship, you can just open up at any, at any place um, the customization stuff and just put on cargo bays where they fit or pull, your, uh, pull up your habs and cockpit a little more, add in like a base, uh, regular structural one by one by one, and then just put two cargo bays on the side, maybe one under it if you can fit it, and kind of go from there. So that um, all plays into your cargo value down here, and having a big cargo value is super, super, super handy to easily maneuver around in this game. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Similar to the outpost build, it kind of was all over the place, but hopefully if you watch the whole thing, you'll get lots of great tips. Um, this is a very cool shipbuilding system. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. This is our B-class build, and we're going to be doing kind of a C-class rework at some point in the future. Um, I'm probably not going to do a full video for it, but we'll probably show it off for anyone that wants to see it in another little video. And on that note, that's it for me. Drop by the channel at twitch.tv slash We'd love to see you, and as always, thanks for your time. Bye-bye.